In this video, I'm gonna share some of the questions I got while working the SQL Clinic at Pass Summit 2016. What's up guys, I'm Adam Saxon, AKA Guy in a Cube, and last week was past summer 2016. I spent a lot of time in the SQL Clinic, and as usual, I got a lot of questions. If you're not familiar with the SQL Clinic at Pass, it's basically an area where a bunch of us get together and answer your questions. This can be really about anything. So it's ranged from SQL Server to BI to Azure to one time I had a question about a uh, lady asked how the picture in a Windows login, how we can change that. So not exactly SQL, but that's a question I got at the clinic. This has evolved over the years and it used to start out with just SQL support. Then the cat team got involved and now the product team's involved, MVPs are involved. So there's just a lot of great resources at the clinic. Also, if you haven't checked out the montage video I put together for Pass Summit 2016, be sure to check that out. I will link to that up above or down in the description below. I had a lot of fun putting that together and I'm very grateful for the folks that helped me with that video. All right, first up is reporting services. Actually, it was a combo question with reporting services and SQL Server. And it was, can I use a wildcard certificate with SQL Server and reporting services? Now, on the SQL Server front with my limited testing, I wasn't able to use a wildcard certificate with SQL Server as it wasn't in the certificate dropdown for me to choose when I went into SQL Server Configuration Manager. On the reporting services side, the wildcard certificate was available for me to use with inside of Reporting Services Configuration Manager. And I was able to set that up and actually hit the web portal and uh, the report server URL perfectly fine with the wildcard cert. So the answer to that on the reporting services front is yes, you can use a wildcard certificate with reporting services. For example, if I have a wildcard certificate for star.guynacube.com, I can go ahead and use that when I hit my report server at guynacubesql.guynacube.com. It will actually use that certificate perfectly fine and reporting services will come up as expected. The next question I got had to do with Kerberos and the Power BI Gateway. The question was, does the gateway use Kerberos when connecting to data sources? And the answer is, as I used a lot at Pass Summit, it depends. Now, the intent of the question, what I believe the intent of the question was, in terms of do we delegate users and can we actually take advantage of Kerberos with those so that the user hitting the data source is the user from Power BI? The answer to that is no. But if your user credential that you added into the data source is a Windows credential and there's an SPN available, when it connects to SQL, it will use Kerberos to do that. And that's a single hop. But like I said, I don't think that's the intent of the question. The intent was, can I use for like SQL Server, if I use my user credential in Power BI, will that flow through to the data source using Kerberos? The answer to that is no, unfortunately not. The next question was an interesting question. It, it's something that I've experienced on my own. I've never been asked this question before, but a customer noticed that when they imported data into Power BI Desktop from analysis services, sometimes it would combine fields together and then they'd have to go through and, and split them back apart. But when they used a live connection, it worked perfectly fine. And the, the question was, why, why is that happening? And so with when you import data into Power BI Desktop, we're doing that with Power Query. And it's not necessarily analysis services aware, so to speak. And so it's gonna do what Power Query does and sometimes it's gonna be combining those fields based on the model that you have and how it's interpreting that data that's coming across. Whereas when you use a live connection, we're actually using the model that's in analysis services directly. So we never involve Power Query in that case. And so you're gonna see potential oddities specifically with multidimensional. And I think it has to do with some of the limitations that are there for multidimensional and how it's handled. Just be aware of that when you're working with analysis services that you may encounter some oddities like that, specifically against multidimensional. So a big question I get is, can I use an always on availability group with Power BI, specifically with the gateway? And the intent of this was, can I use it with a read replica? So specifically, I wanna add application intent to the connection string to force it to the read replica when going through the virtual network name. 
So the answer to this is that you can connect to an always on availability group primary node using the virtual network name as it will just connect and route you specifically to that primary instance. And that's fine. But the intent of this was really, can I get to that read replica using the virtual network name in combination with application intent? And unfortunately you can't use, you can't specify that application intent property of the connection string through a data source using the gateway at this time. So you would actually have to hard code the physical machine name of the read replica in order to connect to it. That will technically work. However, if there's a failover, you may run into a problem. So for example, that may become the primary node at that point, And I don't know that you want to be connecting to that at that point. So you always want to be connecting to the read replica. So it's not going to honor that necessarily. So it is possible, just be aware that you're going to have to do the physical machine name for that read replica instead of the virtual network name. And if you're very interested in this, be sure to uptick the idea for getting this to work with the gateway. That's I'll link that down in the description below that you can go ahead and check that out. Another question I got and this came up a few times was, can I take advantage of the SQL Server 2016 row level security feature that was introduced in 2016? And the answer to that is no. The way the gateways work right now in the data sources, for SQL Server specifically, it's going to use a hard-coded credential and it's not going to take advantage of the session context that's needed to use the row-level security. Right now, Analysis Services is the only connection where we will actually flow the user from Power BI down to the data source. And that's done through effective username on the connection string itself. Again, if this is something you're interested in, be sure to uptick the idea on ideas.powerbi.com and I will link that down in the description below as well. And you can let the product team know that yes, this is something that you wanna take advantage of. The last question I'll highlight is, can we migrate reports in reporting services? And the answer to that is absolutely yes. There is a tool available that you can use to migrate those reports from instance to instance. Now, the question the customer had was a little more complex as it usually is in the clinic, and it was more specifically about how can I customize and update all of these items while migrating the reports? So they had a bunch of items that they needed to change connection string information on, as well as just linking to different things. And the migrate tool that's available for you is does not accomplish that task. So if that's something you wanna do, you can absolutely do it by scripting it and you can use the RS scripting that's available that allows you to do that functionality and interact with the APIs. And then you can customize stuff within that script to meet your needs. I'll link down below to the tool that you can use to migrate from one instance to another instance of reporting services. Okay, let me know down in the comments below if you found these questions and answers helpful to you, or if there was maybe a question that you would like answered that wasn't answered in this. If this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe for more great content. Every Tuesday I do a technical item such as this and I will continue to do these videos for you. And as always, thank you so much for watching and keep being awesome.